Ukrainian unveiled a new ground drone to destroy Russian soldiers in combat Avdivka. New ground drone designed Ukraine to carry bombs and anti-tank mines into battle against Russia, the unmanned ground vehicle, UGV, named Rattle S or Honey Badger, can carry up to 77 pounds at a maximum speed of 15 miles per hour. The main idea is that the robot is used as a mobile warhead that carries anti-tank mines or other explosive devices, said Brave One spokesperson Victoria Kovalchuk. The ground vehicle, UGV, drone can run for 40 to 50 minutes at an average speed or for up to two hours at a slower speed, she said. Images of the machine were shared on X on Tuesday by the Ukrainian minister Mikhailo Fedorov, whose remit includes innovation and digital transformation. The photos showed a four-wheel drone strapped with dummy 82mm mortar rounds, another was mounted with a signal repeater and a yellow TM-62 anti-tank mine. Fedorov said the drone can blow up Russia's tanks and equipment from a safe location, in a separate post on Telegram, he said the drone has a range of around 3.7 miles. The drone, mounted with a repeater and a remote detonation system, is controlled via a first-person view system by an operator who wears goggles. A video of the drone also shared by Fedorov shows an operator using a PlayStation-like remote to drive the vehicle at full speed and hit a white van in an undisclosed location. The Rattle drone was developed as part of a project called Brave One, which Fedorov oversees. It follows input from Ukraine's 120th Reconnaissance Battalion, which wanted a drone capable of remotely delivering a large warhead, and which could resist Russia's electromagnetic interference, per the Kyiv Post. The development team leader, Taras Ostapchuk, told the newspaper that the drone can quietly approach Russian positions, overcome obstacles up to 8 to 10 inches high, and operate effectively on sandy terrain. A video shared by the state-affiliated Ukrainian news outlet Militerny showed it crossing muddy, though flat ground, our honey badger can traverse any terrain that a jeep can, Ostapchuk claimed to the newspaper. The rattle drone passed its field tests and has been put into mass production, Fedorov said in a Telegram post, Brave One had already shared images of experimental land drones in August but declined to share any information about them, citing security reasons, Insider previously reported. <laughs> Natalie Kushnerska, project lead at Brave One, told Insider at the time that the only way for Ukraine to win would ultimately be through new technologies. Meanwhile, before the 2022 invasion, Russia was already conscripting men from Crimea in violation of international law. Reports from Kyiv indicate that Moscow's attempts to enlist troops from occupied Crimea for the Ukraine war have failed. Russian forces have suffered significant losses, particularly after their recent Avdivka offensive. The National Resistance Center of Ukraine created by Ukraine's Special Operations Forces, reported that Russian efforts to conscript soldiers from Crimea have been thwarted. Residents are leaving the peninsula to avoid conscription, leaving Moscow's recruitment plan unfulfilled, but the Ukrainian center labels Russia's mobilization in the occupied territory as an international crime, pledging accountability for those responsible and urging residents to report collaboration with the enemy. In another development, the Institute for the Study of War ISW, suggests that Russian military authorities coerced Ukrainian prisoners of war into fighting for Moscow in Ukraine, potentially violating the Geneva Conventions. The US accuses Russia of executing disobedient soldiers and threatening units with death for retreating. White House spokesperson John Kirby called these actions reprehensible. Russian forces made attempts to regain the positions they had previously lost on the Bakhmut and Zaporizhia fronts, with a total of 48 clashes taking place between Russian and Ukrainian forces over the course of Saturday, the 28th of October. Over the course of the day, 
Ukraine's defense forces clashed with Russian forces 48 times. Russian forces carried out five missile strikes and 18 airstrikes and deployed multiple launch rocket systems, MLRS, 20 times to attack the positions of Ukrainian troops and civilian settlements. Russia also deployed four Iskander K surface to surface missiles to carry out a missile strike on Ukraine, but Ukraine's air defense downed three of the Russian missiles. While the situation in eastern and southern Ukraine remains difficult, there were no significant changes on the Volyn and Polisia fronts. There is no evidence that Russia is forming new offensive units on these fronts, but units of Belarusian armed forces continue to carry out military operations in areas near the Belarusian-Ukrainian border. Russia continues to maintain its forces near the Ukrainian border on the Sivershina and Slobodnshina fronts and is conducting sabotage and reconnaissance operations, shelling Ukrainian settlements from Russian territory and amassing mines and other defensive constructions along the Ukrainian border. Around 10 Ukrainian civilian settlements came under Russian fire, including Senkivka, Chernihiv Oblast, Zarutsky and Turiya, Sumy Oblast, and Kazacha Lopan, Staritsia and Vivchansk, Kharkiv Oblast. Nina! On the Kapiansk front, Russian forces are conducting unsuccessful offensive operations near Sinkivka and Ivanivka, Kharkiv Oblast, where Ukrainian forces repelled five Russian assaults. On the Bakhmut front, Russian forces attempted to regain positions near Klishchivka and Andrivka, Donetsk Oblast, where Ukrainian forces repelled six Russian assaults. Around 20 civilian settlements came under Russian mortar and artillery fire, including Minkivka, Orohovo Vasilivka, Ivaniski, Klishchivka and Andrivka, Donetsk Oblast. <laughs>